Greetings, traveler. It is I, the Max, and I shall guide you to the glorious wonders of dynamic range. God, I'm so good at this YouTube thing. Now, we've all been there, right? You're sitting on your couch, scrolling through your Instagram reels, wondering what it's like to have a life. And then this one reel comes in and it fills the room with blinding light. It vaporizes your eyeballs. And as you sit there in complete disbelief with third degree burns all over your face, you're left with only one thought. Man, I wonder how I can do this. And you're probably thinking, what do you mean you wonder how you can do this? Everybody knows how to do this. You just filmed the reel on the iPhone. It's easy. Yes, thank you, James, for that very insightful comment. And yes, you can shoot HDR on an iPhone, but you see, the problem with that is... You can't really get shots like this, or this, or this, with an iPhone. So I'm sitting there with my drone and thinking, okay, this thing's got 10-bit color, right? Surely there must be a way. And there is. You need to do hours of painful research to figure it out. But the good news is I have done that for you. And by the end of this video, you will know how to color grade your Instagram reels in HDR with proper tone mapping. So if it's posted to a story or sent as a DM, it does not look like ass. Now, I am by no means a professional colorist, so I might be a little fuzzy on some of the exact details of how this stuff works, but none of the professional colorists on this platform would make this tutorial, so you are stuck with me. Now, there's two main things you need in order to do this. The first one is a pretty obvious one. You need an HDR display. The most accessible one I can think of is the good old M1 MacBook Pro. Either a 14-inch or a 16-inch version will work. Just make sure it's the one with, with the notch. This will also work on an M1 iPad Pro, the 12-inch one with the mini LED display, or obviously any HDR monitor that you can just plug in via HDMI. You do need to keep in mind that you need at least 1000 nits peak brightness. So no cheapo pro arts, no mid-tier gaming monitors. Just get the damn MacBook. Now the second thing you need is a 10-bit camera. So a Sony a7S III, a DJI Air 2S, a Mavic 3, a GoPro 11, the Avadas, the Air units with the latest firmware. How many cameras have 10-bit color these days? Now before we begin, I have to explain the next-gen recording setup that I've got going on here. You see, as of filming this video, none of the available screen recording software actually supports recording in HDR. And because I don't have a capture card and I'm not buying one, I'm gonna do the sensible thing and I'm gonna point an iPhone at my screen. Let's dive in. Okay, here we are in DaVinci Resolve, which is the software we're going to be using. If you're using Premiere and you're wondering how you can follow along, the answer is to stop using inferior software. Now, before we even begin, there's a few things we need to set up first. So we need to go to Project Settings, and in here, there's a few things we need to do. First, if we're doing this for reels, we want to set it to 1080 by 1920, which is the resolution for Instagram reels. Unlike YouTube, Instagram will not give you a better bitrate if you export in 4K. Instead, it will try to compress it down to 1080, and it will do it in the worst way possible. The other thing you want to do is to set your frame rate to 29.97, which is a frame rate that Instagram uses for its reels, and it will force your 24 frames per second footage to 29.97, and it will also do that in the worst way possible. Basically, the idea is to give Instagram's shitty compressor as little work to do as possible. Now, once we're done here, we want to move over to color management. And in here, you want to set the color science to DaVinci YRGB Color Managed. You want to set your color processing mode to HDR and the output color space to HDR HLG. You also want to click this HDR Mastering 4 toggle and leave it at 1000 nits. Lastly, you want to come down here to Dolby Vision, click Enable and set the Mastering Display to 1000 nit P3 D65 this thing. Once you're done, you can click save and we're good to go with DaVinci. One last thing you want to do is you want to come up here to the control center, hit display, 
And in here, you probably have the default Apple XDR display profile selected. Now, this is a mode meant for consumption. So if you color grade in this profile, your highlights will be shown brighter than they actually are. So in order to get the accurate representation, you wanna come down to HDR video and select that. Once you're done, your brightness will be locked and you are now in a proper reference mode. Now we can start color grading. All right, now I'm gonna be using three distinct clips. These are all shot on the DJI Air 2S, but again, so long as you're using a 10-bit camera, the steps are basically the same. Let's bring these three into the timeline. All right, let's start with the boat clip. Go into the color tab. I'm gonna create a couple of nodes because I have a feeling we're gonna need more than one. And I'm gonna set my scopes to parade. Now, first thing we wanna do is make sure that our setup is actually correct. So let's grab the gain and YOLO it all the way to the right. And yes, we are getting some really nice highlights. Now let's bring the gain down a little bit, get some contrast going, bring the highlights further up so we have a nice specular blown out spot here in the sand, which is the brightest spot. Now this is a good starting point. Let's go into the next node, which is where we're gonna do our HDR wheels. So we wanna bring that specular bit down so we can see the sand is no longer blown out. This part here is probably the boat, which is fine. I think having the boat clipped is not something we can really get around. But what I wanna do is grab the highlights and bring the overall brighter areas up while still keeping the specular down a little bit. Now I might wanna go into gamma and add a little bit more contrast. I like where this is going. Now let's go over to the next node and make the blue ass water a little bit more blue ass. For that, we're gonna use the color warper. So I'm gonna grab this dot here, move it over to the blue side and drag it further out to increase the saturation. And because we're working in a much larger color space, you can actually make it quite vibrant. Now I also wanna go into the curves, hue versus saturation. I wanna select the sand bit, extend it just a little bit, and then make it a little less saturated. And now here is before, and here is after. Now, you might be wondering at this point, okay, but how do I know what it's gonna look like when it's in SDR? And thankfully for that, we have this Dolby Vision tab, which we have enabled in our project settings here. And if you go into the Dolby Vision tab, you can click Enable Tone Mapping Preview, and then click Analyze All. Give it a second, it's gonna analyze the clip and is going to give you a preview of what it's going to look like when it's conformed to SDR. In this case, the ocean is a little too dark, so I wanna go into our very first node, bring the lift up just a little bit, maybe go into the HDR wheels in the second tab and bump up the shadow. It's pretty good. And now if I go back to Dolby Vision, disable tone mapping preview, still looks pretty good. I think I, I wanna bring some of that contrast back. Yeah, I like where this is going. Now let's move over to the next clip. So like this one, this is from Bali. It's one of those famous rice terraces. And this one's actually considerably darker. So let's see what we can do with this one. Okay, let's create a bunch of nodes, go to the first one and punch the gain up and we already see the building rooftops starting to clip, which is fine, we don't really care that much. I'm gonna leave it right around 2.3 and bring the gain down for some of that contrast, not that much contrast. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm going to reduce the contrast a little bit and then punch the gamma up and that will become relevant in a sec. Now, up in this next one, what I wanna do is I wanna bring the shadows down just a little bit. 
And while we're here, let's bring those rooftops down a bit. So now they are no longer clipping. Now let's move over to the next node and play with the greens. Just make it a bit more vibrant. You know, you don't want to go with desaturated greens if you got HDR. All right, let's move over to the next one. And I'm going to play with the gamma color offset a little bit. I'm going to make it a bit more green. And then I'm going to pop over to the lift and bring some of that magenta back. Because we don't want it to be poison green. We just want it to be vibrant green. Right, okay, this is looking pretty good, but I think we could use some more contrast. So let's go over to the curves, turn on editable splines, and let's YOLO that shit up. Okay, now bring some of the contrast back that we took out in the beginning. A little too contrasty for my taste, so I'm gonna take some of that initial contrast out a bit more. And at this point, I actually think it's worth offsetting it down. Now going back to the curves, let's move it further up. I think I'm actually going to punch up the gamma a little bit. It's a balancing game, you need to find that sweet spot. Okay, this is looking pretty good. Let's move over to the next one. This one is from Tuscany and the distinct feature about this one is that we are blowing out the highlights. The drone was pointed at the sun. This bit of sky is basically non-recoverable. So let's see what we can do. And let's create a couple of nodes. Go into the first one, see how bad the situation is. Pretty bad. This entire area completely clipped. We can actually play into that a little bit. Let's bring down the rest. Let's bring up the gamma. And let's blow it out a little further so we can accentuate the sun rays in this part. Let's move over to the next one, bump up the saturation a little bit. Go into the HDR wheels and bring the specular down a little. Just because we're clipping doesn't mean we have to be disgusting about it. Bring it just below the clipping point and then up again so that it's touching its limit. Okay, now what I want to do is go into the color warper. I'm actually going to create a gradient window for this part. And we're going to make the yellow a little punchier somewhere around here. And in the next node, I'm gonna do the opposite to the sky. So I'm gonna create a gradient. I'm gonna put it about here. But instead of making it more yellow, we're gonna make it a little bluer. So we still wanna keep our highlights nice and orange but we want to bring some of that sky color. Now let's move over to the next node and add a little bit of a finishing touch. I'm going to bring the gamma up. I'm going to go to HDR wheels. I'm going to bring the light down. I'm going to go back here and I'm going to bring down the lift. And at this point, I feel like the field is a little too orange, so I'll probably create a new node, go into my hue versus saturation curve, tap it, extend it a little bit, and bring it down just a touch. And here is before, here is after, and if we go into Dolby Vision and enable the tone mapping preview, looks like shit because we need to click Analyze All again. Every time you make adjustments to a new clip, you need to click Analyze. And you may be wondering why that is, and the answer to that is, I don't fucking know, it's just how it works, I'm not a professional colorist. Now let's go back to our Bali one and check the colors here. Looks pretty good to me, I would totally post this. Now when it's time to export, you want to go into Deliver tab, you want to go to ProRes 422, 
and export it as ProRes. And I know what you're thinking, wait a minute, I can't post ProRes to Instagram. Yes, James, you can't, but we're not gonna be posting it because there's one more step we need to do. So let's export this as ProRes Intermediate. Click the old render button, wait for it to render, which is now done. Now, before we continue to the final step, there's something really cool I wanna show you. Did you know that YouTube has this really cool secret feature where if you scroll under the video and you click subscribe, it makes me feel a lot better about myself. For this next step, we are going to be using Apple's compressor. Now, compressor isn't free, it's gonna cost you 50 bucks, but if you plan to be consistently delivering HDR content, this is the best 50 bucks you're ever gonna spend. Now, we are going to grab our ProRes and, and drag it into the compressor. When it's added, it's gonna show you a bunch of useless crap you don't care about. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna click Add here. And in the preset list, you're going to select Apple devices, 4K, HEVC, 10-bit, HLG, Dolby Vision 8.4. And if you know your iPhones, you know that Dolby Vision is the HDR format that iPhone supports. It's gonna give you this little side view, which is gonna do nothing. And you're going to click Start Batch. And once you're done, it's going to give you your file compressed into HEVC with 35 megabytes instead of a gig. And if you preview it, you can see it in all of the glorious HDR we've just created. At this point, you want to airdrop it to your iPhone, fire up Instagram, add some annoyingly trendy music to it, and fire it off for the world to see. And by world, I mean 14 people, because Instagram's algorithm f***ing sucks. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you'll subscribe to the like button, like the subscribe button, do the YouTube things, and I will see you in the next one. I promise this channel isn't dead. I've been working on a lot of really cool stuff. I'm gonna be resurrecting the channel soon. There's a lot of, lot of really interesting stuff coming and you're gonna wanna see it.